What's going on everybody? I'm Patrick Chapla, founder of Palax and creator of Palax Master Coach. And in this video, I'm excited to share with you guys our slow break pattern. A slow break is probably the most important transition scheme that you guys can implement with your team for these three reasons. The first is that about 60% of all transition opportunities are gonna come in the form of a six on six or six on five where we would use our slow break. The second reason is because if we can learn how to attack a defense in that first 10 seconds, we're gonna be attacking a defense that doesn't have its slides ready and we're gonna be able to take advantage of them not being set up and prepared. The third reason we wanna have a slow break implemented is because it will allow us to attack a defense while we are exchanging players without having to step in the box and call yellow and then stop everything. And if we can run a slow break that will easily transition us and fluidly transition us into our offense, we're gonna be an extremely dangerous team. So the slow break that we are gonna go over here is the same slow break that the Duke coaches taught in their coaching clinic a couple years ago. And we're gonna go over all of the ways that they use this slow break to attack a defense as well as how it sets them up to run their offense efficiently and quickly once they're done with their slow break transition set. I like to call this slow break the safe slow break because it's not quite as gung-ho as some of the slow breaks that you'll see at schools like Brown and at Tufts. And it does a really good job of getting the ball into our attackmen's hands and allowing them to attack from behind the goal while always being able to throw back to behind the goal. And as long as the ball is behind the goal that we're attacking, it's as far as possible away from the goal we're defending. And if we do end up turning the ball over, it will allow us to get into our ride and won't give up a lot of transition. So now let's go to the green screen and we'll show you how to set it up, how it works, and exactly what we're going to be looking for. To set up our slow break, we're first going to address where our attackman will be when the ball is on the defensive end. A1, a righty, and A2, a lefty, will be on the midline to their respective sides. They need to be on the midline in order to make a play on the ball in case the ball rolls to the midline. A3, our third and X attackman, will line up 10 to 15 yards behind the midline in the middle of the field and able to play any ball that gets past A1 and A2. As the ball comes down in transition, the attackman will drop watching the play and making a call that reflects the transition situation that we're in. Here, they will call slow break. In our example, the ball will cross the midline with M1 guarded by defensive midi 1. M2 and M3 will follow guarded by the LSM and defensive midi 2. In this scenario, it doesn't matter who is carrying the ball, just that we are even and that whoever is carrying is running down one of the sides in order to get the ball to the attackman. The attack will rotate by having the ball side player pop open as an outlet for the midfielder. The far side attackman is going to fill on his side towards the crease and get as dangerous as possible. The last attackman will get to X and make sure that he is an outlet for the first attackman to get the ball. Now our slow break is set up, and so let's talk defense. So we're not going to cover too much on the defensive end other than these first two concepts. The first concept is that we want to make sure that we are playing really good one-on-one -on -one defense because if we get beat before our slides are ready, we're going to give up a lot of easy goals. The second thing we want to make sure we are doing is that our midfielders and anyone who is coming down in transition gets into the hub first and matches up inside out. A lot of midfielders seem to think because their player is subbing, they can hang out above the restraining line, but really they're just opening up our defense to be taken advantage of. The one time we wouldn't want to go inside out for getting in on defensive transition is if we are in some sort of press ride or we want to put a lot of pressure on the offense in that transition set. Offensively, we want to make sure that we're getting the ball to X for three main reasons. First, X is as far away from our own goal as possible and we will be able to get into a good ride if we turn the ball over. The second reason is that we make all defensemen and all midfielders who are getting in turn their heads to look at X and they might miss some of our eventual cutters. The third reason is because a lot of times defensive middies getting in don't get into the hub and they hang out at the restraining line like we just covered on the defensive end. And if they are hanging out there and we beat someone at a dodge from X, there won't be any slide that will be able to come to them. In our example, M1 will pass to A2. M1, or the first midi that gets in, should cut the middle looking for a feed. If nothing is there, A2 will pass to A3 at X. At this point, we should have something resembling a lopsided 2-2-2, two, 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 with A2 still out on the left side, M1 and A1 on the crease, A3 at X with the ball, M2 and M3 up top. 
From here, we're going to run a Charlie or circle rotation with the attackman, where A3 will dodge to his right, A1 will float or cut the back pipe because he has already cleared through, and A2 will follow to X. The midfielders will run a backside exchange where the midi on the crease and the midi farthest away from the dodge will switch places. M1 will float and M3 will cut the middle. M2 will stay high as an outlet to the ball side. The whole thing will look like this. The looks here are A3 will turn the corner and score, try to feed A1 or M3, and then get out with his hands using his hands free dodge and throw up to M2 or back to A2. If he throws back to A2, A2 will dodge left and we will go through the same play on the other side. A1 will cut back across the face of the goal, A3 will follow, and M1 will be an outlet. M3 will float away from the dodge and M2 will cut the middle. A2's looks are to turn the corner and score, into A1 or M2, and then get out with his hands to throw back to A3 or M1. This could continue again and again, but for the most part we'll only run it twice and get the ball up to the midfielders and M1. Once M1 receives the ball, A1 will get off the crease and to his usual righty spot, and we will be into our 2-3-1 offense and can settle or run our offense right away. You can also run this motion off an end line as a set play. To give our players a really good understanding of exactly how this slow break works, I recommend running the Duke Skeleton Clear Drill, where we will put an entire team on the field with no opposing team, and they will clear the ball from the goalie to the defense to the midfielders, and then we'll run the slow break on the offensive end without any defensemen. Once they have a good understanding of all the formations and exactly how it works, then we can add in a defense and do the three-quarter field transition drill where we have three attackmen and three defensemen and we send various patterns of midfielders in and the attackmen have to read and react and play in transition throughout the drill. And so by using these two types of drills, we give them a good understanding of exactly how it works and then we let them run it against opponents. Teaching your players how to attack in all types of transition opportunities, whether it be a fast break, trailer situation, or slow break, can absolutely revolutionize how your players play the game and how many goals you guys score a game. Although we may end up turning the ball over a little more because we're really pushing all the time, we're also going to create a lot more scoring chances, which should result in more goals, even though we are turning the ball over more. And so the one thing I want to leave you with before we end this video is that if this doesn't really set up your offense or you don't really think you can use it because you run an open set, you can easily modify any type of transition pattern, especially this slow break, to get you set up for an open set. And so by using the same concepts, but maybe just not cutting that last midi in, we're now into an open set and we can quickly run from our open set. So I really recommend taking as many concepts as you can and not just eliminating this because it goes to a 1-3-2 or a 2-3-1 set. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to share it if you really liked it and check out all the other videos on palaxmastercoach.com. If you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions, make sure to email me at patrick at palax.com. Have a good one, and I will see you guys in the next video.